Hello everyone, FunshineX here. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Beyond Mods A to Z, where we're going to cover every single mod in the Feed the Beast Beyond pack so that you are an expert. I'm FunshineX, and I look a little different today. What do you think? <laughs> new skin. No, just kidding. This is new armor. And uh, you might have been playing with this mod, and you know exactly what mod I'm about to do. Uh, without further ado, the new mod, you probably saw in the title anyway, is Embers. Now this is a mod that would just came out recently to Minecraft, so not a lot of people have used it, um, but it is really cool. And look how amazing it looks. Just the normal, build, you know, little structures. Um, it's, a, it's supposed to be a dwarven theme. I think it's a little more steampunk, kind of. Not really, but kind of. It's kind of a, maybe a mix between the two. Um, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> there's tons of decoration blocks and there's tons of blocks that, you know, it's a full tech mod. You know, it kind of looks a little magical, um, but it's definitely a tech mod. It's got your smelters, it's got your, you know, ore processing and item filtering and sorting. And um, it's got a little bit of magic when it comes to the altar, but we'll see. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing, let's look. just look at some of the decoration blocks. You've got these uh, ashen tile slabs, the ashen bricks, the kamenite bricks, and the ashen stone. Um, can we see how to craft some of this stuff? Kamenite bricks um, are very similar to vanilla bricks. You've got to like take four of the brick items and combine them to get the, uh, the block. And that's just made with smel smelting kamenite blend, which is clay and bone meal. So pretty easy to get. That's going to get a Kamenite. Kamenite is used quite a, a few places in the mod, so you'll need to know that recipe pretty well. The Ashen stuff um, uses this Ash Pile, which we're going to get later. This is a really weird looking recipe, um, but you're going to end up with this as a, basically a byproduct of processing things. Um, so you should have plenty. Uh, you can make it in a brick form or stone form or in tile form. Pretty cool. So that's it. Everything um, thing has a block, a fence, a stair, and a slab, and all the different things. The core stone is a little bit different. The only possible way to get that is to kill the mob, the mob that this um, pack adds, and you need to kill him. Well, you can kill him with anything, but here he is. <laughs> He's the ancient golem, and uh, let's go ahead and show. Let's see. I don't know if I don't want to let him out. Um, he has a beam attack. Oh, he's out. Okay. <laughs> he's out. I don't know how he walked through that. Maybe I spawned him through the wire, though. But that was kind of cool. He put himself back in the cage. It was very nice of you. Uh, but you're going to want to, if you see him, you know, have some armor because they do a lot of health. They can punch you, and they can also do this little flame attack at you that you can kind of dodge because it's pretty slow. Um, but you want to kill him. And the last hit you do on them, you want it to be with a pickaxe um, at the beginning because you're going to get a special item. So let me kill him with a pickaxe. And you can see this little eye dropped. Now, sometimes you will get core stone when you kill him. And I think you can kill him with a sword or a pickaxe to get that. And that's just a decoration block. There's really nothing useful for it. Um, but this eye is useful. It's called the Eye of an Ancients. And when I look at anything in this mod, well, most things in this mod, you're going to see this really cool effect up on the right. And this is this mod's documentation system. So the author of this mod is Elucent. And he had a plan when he made it to completely avoid all GUIs. A GUI is what you get when you click on an item and this thing comes up, right? It's kind of ugly. I've never liked GUIs myself. Um, Thomcraft d has very few, and that's why one of the reasons I really like Thomcraft, and there's other mods that have done it um, pretty well as well, but the it's it's been one of my you know prayers that mod authors can create things without complicated GUIs. You know, just click on things and show it in the world, act, interactions and stuff. So this author said, well, I need documentation and I don't want to just make a book because that's a GUI. You have to open it up and look. So he kind of has a GUI here, but it's not really. Um, and it's this like interaction effect where you, if you hover, if you have this eye and you hover over an item, it will show you what the item is and kind of give a description. So that is really cool. Now, uh, once you have this eye, the next thing you want to get is this little hammer here. Recipe of that, lead, iron, and stick. So guys, if you're wondering, this mod completely uses, you know, common or dictionary um, minerals. So you've got iron, gold, copper, silver, lead, and then an alloy that they call Dawnstone, which is just from mixing um, gold and copper. So it's all your standard things. You probably have a ton of these minerals anyway, just from playing modern Minecraft and going out on a mining run. So you can get into embers pretty early on. You don't have to, you know, it's not definitely not an end game mod by far, and it's a really cool looking mod. So start it as soon as you can. Once you get these items, get this hammer. 
All right, so we've got a hammer, um, and we've got a little eye. Now, some things when you use the eye um, don't show you anything, like this research table doesn't do anything, but if you put them in there, then all of a sudden uh, this research table allows you to kind of inspect items. So um, I can do the same thing with one of these little shards that we're going to cover later. Put that on there, and now I can see what the ember crystal is, right? So that's what the research station's purpose is, is to allow you to inspect items to kind of give you the documentation about them. However, the research station is a totally cool pedestal just to display things. Like if I have a really cool pickaxe, maybe I just want to put it on there just to make it a cool little pedestal. So, yeah, I've used that a couple places in this, um, in this uh, in a tutorial. So that's a research station. It's uh, not too hard to build. It's some wood planks, wood eye of agents. So yeah, really easy to make. You'll need two eyes, I guess, because you're gonna need one to inspect and a research table there. All right, let's keep going. Um, this mod has a storage system um, called bins. Bins are an, a block. They hold one stack of one item. That's it. So it's a little bit limiting. But it's also really cool for certain applications where you want only one thing to go in a bin and only one stack of it, you know, and you don't want to have any more, you don't want to overflow, that kind of thing. So bins are pretty cool, and they've got a really cool look where you can actually see what item is in there. So I can take all these out, and they're empty, and I can just put one in there, but if I put a bunch... Oh, I can't put that in there more because it's a different item. Um, nope, come out. But you can see I do a whole stack at once. So that's a bin. Um, we can... What's the recipe for a bin? Where are you? There you are. Iron, iron plate. Piece of cake. And I'll tell you how to make iron plates later. But it's or dictionaries to any other mods, iron plates. They also have these things um, called um, gauges. And you can put this item gauge on any bin and you can look at it and it'll show you exactly what's in it. So this bin has one slot and it's got 64 ember shards. This one has one slot and 64 ember crystals. Pretty cool. Um, they also have other gauges that we'll see later. All right. And keep moving along. Um, after you've got the storage, the very simplified storage here, you've got um, piping. Now there's three things you're gonna pipe. Liquids, items, and ember. The ember is kind of like the power system for this mod. So you have to pipe it, but you don't pipe it with pipes. You pipe it through the air because it's a gas. Um, so we have this really cool system. So let's cover liquids first. You've got a fluid tank. And you can, oh, it's not right one. There's a fluid tank. Uses the caminite, some iron, pretty easy. And that will hold, I believe, well, let's figure it out. Let's uh, let's do science so I'm not making it up. So break that, put it in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. And we, oop, oh crap, that's not good. <laughs> Did I ruin anything? Okay, I don't think I ruined anything. Um, so 16 buckets in this little fluid tank. And we can verify that by putting a fluid gauge on there. So um, fluid gauge is crafted with a compass of paper and iron. The item gauge is a compass, paper, and lead. Pretty easy. All right, so that'll tell us how much is in there, 16 buckets. And if we want to move it, we need two things. We need a pump to move it out and then uh, iron pipes. Now, don't get confused with these other pipes here because they're kind of named very similar. So by using a pump, nothing can go back through this direction. This is only for extraction, one way, basically one way tube for the water. And it requires a redstone signal um, to operate. So right now, no water is being moved over here. You can see we can put a gauge here. We've got nothing. When there's nothing, it doesn't show anything on your gauge. Um, but we can go ahead and pump this. And you're going to see it's pretty quick. See how fast it drains? One, It's like a bucket a second, pretty much. And that should be filling up over here. Yep. And some um, water is going to be in the pipe, so if I broke it right now, I would lose some of that. It would just be in the pipe and it would be gone forever. But we end up with all 16 buckets moved over here. Pretty cool. All right, the item is very similar. So I've got a bin here full of iron ingots. We can see there's 64 iron ingots. Uh, instead of using a mechanical pump, we use an item pump. So pretty easy to know that one. Um, that needs a lever as well, a redstone signal. And that goes through an item pipe. This is an iron pipe for liquid, item pipe for items. It gets, it's, you know, if you think about it, it's easy, but it, it's really easy to accidentally put iron pipes down and wonder why your items aren't moving around. Um, so yeah, we can do this. And look how fast this takes it through. It's really quick. You can move a stack in like two or three seconds. And there it is. It's all over here. Cool. Uh, next thing. Oh, should we talk about how to make the pipes? The pump itself is caminite plates, item pipes, redstone, the pipes, lead, iron pipe is iron, 
mechanical pump, you know, so you can see. Pretty easy to make those things. A lever, obviously, you know what I make. All right, now let's talk about the ember. Now, first we need to produce some ember. And that's over here. This is called, uh, actually, we don't have, we need to produce. We've got a battery. It's called a copper cell, and we have an ember gauge, which is used with copper, and the same kind of thing. And that'll tell us there's 24,000 units of ember in this battery, basically. Think of a copper cell like a battery. Um, and to get it out, we need an emitter. Really easy to put it on top. Actually, you can put it on any side, all sides. So you can have a ton of different emitters coming out of it. And that takes a redstone signal. Now we have to tell it where to go. And that's where that hammer comes into play. Use that hammer there. And over here, I've got another battery that is empty. And it's got a receiver, a receptor, sorry. So the emitter is crafted like that, the receptor like that. So maybe just copper and iron and some kamenite. And I need to shift right click on a receptor and right click on emitter. So shift to receive, usually click that one first, the receiver, shift right click, and then right click on the emitter. And there's two different sounds if you hear. This one is high and then a lower sound. And that you know, knows you're successful. If I click on this and I click somewhere else, you know, it won't make that sound and, or you'll get two sounds and that kind of thing. So I always shift click here. Obviously that's the wrong sound. So, oh, come on, shift there. Right, there we go. So now I can turn this on and watch this cool effect. Ember is a gas, so look at it, shoot it across there in this really cool arc fashion. That is really cool. Now, even though it's a gas, it needs line of sight. So if this guy can't see this, there's a big black, uh, wall here. Let's get go ahead and make a wall. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I think it's because there wasn't a wall there to begin with. <laughs> it went through. But now that there's a wall, okay, it made a liar out of me. <laughs> Sometimes there's things in the way. I guess Kamenite bricks don't class or classify as something in the way, but there might be another machine or another uh, something that's blocking you, and you might need to have a different route. And that's where you use these relays. They're basically just going to say, you know, move it this direction. So if we had a big wall or something that was making us not be able to transfer it, we can go um, work backwards. So this is our endpoint. Shift right click, right click on the relay shift right click on the relay and then right click on the emitter now instead of making this rainbow thing it's going to go over to the relay and then over there oops i think i might have broken it by clicking on it so lever there you go see it's going to go into the relay and it's cool it kind of takes this little path and then over there and out there so even if you're not like i, I see a path where i just like take um this and like let's move this over here and now it's confused it doesn't know where to go so it'll keep sending a little bit and it's kind of hover and then it'll just dissipate and go away um, let's put that on top let's get a lever put that there all right so let's make a circular path so from receptor to there from there to there and from there to there Turn that on, and now you should see we get this like <laughs> it's just gonna just gonna jump around forever. There's no loss when you transfer it like this. Not like some energy system where you lose power. This is just gonna cycle forever, infinity. So even if you're not using this mod for anything else, just to like put some cool fire fire sparkles around your base, <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna tell you how to generate the ember later, but this is just how you move it around. So let's go and turn this off. If you have a lower end computer, this is generating a lot of particles, so you might want to go into your video settings and turn particles down a little bit. Um, that can help with lag if you're getting lag from embers. All right, so we covered em uh, moving ember, moving items, and moving liquids. Let's go back here now and look at this thing. This is a um, storage system, so we had storage for items. We've now got storage for uh, liquids. Wait, we already had a storage for liquids. It was the pump. Well, the tank. Well, the tank only holds 16 blocks, and you might have more than that. Now, what's cool about this thing, I'm going to actually just delete it right now, is it's a multi-block structure that you don't have to build. <laughs> you just get this thing called a reservoir and a kamenite ring. The re reservoir is a 3x3 three three block. You just need to put it down somewhere where you have access to the bottom because that's where its entry point is, right there. And then you need to put, um, right by itself, the reservoir holds no liquid. But if you add kamenite rings to it by clicking in the middle, 
it will increase, increase it, um, its capacity. And this is infinite as far as world height limitations. So I can just keep stacking and stacking. But let's just keep going with two for now. Um, so that is allow you um, how you make the tank itself. Now we need to be able to interact with it. Um, so you have to come to the bottom and you're thinking, hmm, well I know a pump, if I were to use a pump, it's a one-way valve and so I can only pump things out of this. I couldn't pump it back in or I could pump in but not out. Well, there's a solution for that as well, and that's in the form of the mechanical core. What that does is take this one slot, and you can only use one of these on this reservoir, so I can't like chain them like this, but you just use one slot, and that turns your one input-output into one, two, three, four, five inputs and outputs. And it doesn't matter which side you use. So here I've got an input, and just to show that this is mod compatible with other mods, I've got liquid XP in here, 15 buckets of it, and I see this, um, Gage actually told us that. So it'll hold any liquid that's that's forged forge liquid enabled, something like that. <laughs> so then I've got a pump here, and I can pump that experience out of there, and it's going to quickly drain, and it's going to be putting it into my um, thing here. And if I want to know how much is in there, we'll go ahead and get a fluid gauge, put it right there. You can see we've got 80 buckets <laughs> can be stored in there, and I've got 16.8 right now of liquid XP. Um, so that means each of these Kaminart rings adds 40 buckets worth of uh, storage. And you can, I said you could put it to the top again, so you could hold a ton of liquid in here more than you ever need. Um, and then, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can, yeah, we can pump into there. Um, then we could pump out of it again if we wanted to. Was that a, a pump? <laughs> Mechanical pump and a lever. So we could take that back out and pump it somewhere else if we needed to. All right. Uh, as far as crafting all those things, the Kamenite uh, ring, the reservoir itself, is some Kamenite brick, some iron, and a fluid tank. Makes sense. Then the Kamenite ring itself is just Kamenite brick walls, or yeah, the ring and uh, Kamenite bricks. So this is really easy to make. If you've got a lot of clay and bone meal, you can make a ton of Kamenite and make these really cool liquid storage systems. All right. Um, let's say, for instance, I want to put a pump here. And I want to put a lever on this, but I can't because above it there's nothing. This thing is blocking this. And I want to look at, um, I don't know if I can put a lever on the bottom. Oh, I could. But let's say that you couldn't. Let's say this was blocked on all sides like that. All right. There's no way to put a, a lever on this pump. You can use these things called mechanical accessors to extend the range of the mechanical core. So instead of putting the pump there, I put the accessor here. And you can see it's added three additional ports um, for that one little slot. Actually, I think it might add five. Nope, just three. Yeah, it's got one to three um, there. So now that's just moved it out. And now I could put my pump on there. And now I can have plenty of room to put a lever. All right. So that's the um, mechanical accessor, which is iron, iron plate, and caminite stairs. Easy peasy. Cool. All right. Let's keep moving. Uh, we've now, we want to know how to generate this stuff. All right, well, first of all, we've got to get these ember crystals and ember shards. And that is used a machine called the ember bore. Now, we've got to go around and actually look for a place to use the bore, because in right here, there's not a lot of ember. And I can tell that by using this atmosphere gauge, copper, redstone, and iron, just using it right like this. And you can see there's a little meter, and it tells me, uh, you know, got a little bit of ember, but not very much. And I've flown around all over the place looking for like a super high, ch it's basically chunk base, um, super high ember thing. Couldn't find one, and I flew around for quite a while. So I think the really high ember areas are kind of rare and by specific. I think uh, things like high mountains and that kind of stuff have a better chance of being uh, high in ember. Um, but I'd find one that's kind of nice. So let's go there. I can teleport here with my map. Let's see. Ember board. Teleport there. All right. We've arrived. I'm just kind of in some forest, forest hills. And it's got a little bit, you know, it's not super high on this meter, but it was actually higher than pretty much everything I found around here. And so it'll do. Um, obviously, if you really want a ton of ember, you're going to want to find a better um, chunk. And then you're going to want to dig down to bedrock. This stuff is only found at bedrock. Well, it's not really found anywhere, but you can get it at bedrock. So I've dug all the way down here and made this really impressive looking machine. Well, all of this top stuff, so all of this and that and all the way down to here, that's all just decoration, honestly. I've got a mechanical um, accessor and a mechanical core in there. Um, we can see there. So there's a mechanical core. And that's got a port, but I've... Um, 
use the mechanical accessors just to make it look pretty cool. I don't know, maybe it looks cool. Kind of looks like a drill hanging down. <laughs> but the only really piece that is the the bore is this um, two by three by three structure here, so I can get rid of it. Um, and so you just take that ember bore and click it um, two blocks above bedrock. Oops, don't destroy the bedrock function. <laughs> right there. So you'll notice it just the the blades just barely dig into the bedrock, and that's where you want to be. Can't put it too low, can't put it too high, right here, two blocks above bedrock. All right, now how do we make this thing work? Well, we need coal, lowly coal. So put it in there, in the bin, and turn it on, and we'll transfer it all in there. And it doesn't use that much. Uh, you can see it used four, <laughs> and some of it is stuck in this pipe. So I think I've actually put two stacks already in the pipes, so they're, they're just kind of waiting here. So really there's probably like two and a half stacks of coal, just kind of queued up. And you can see it's kind of vibrating. I don't know, maybe on your PC it'll actually spin better, but I think it's spinning so fast that it kind of gives that effect like when you look at a, a wheel on a bicycle and it looks kind of like it's just kind of going steady. Um, so yeah, so that's going to do that, and it's going to spit out two things, ember shards and ember crystals. That was these guys here. Uh, there. And the, shard, the crystals are better than the shards by a long shot, so you want crystals if you can find them, but you're not going to get very many if you're not in a very ember-rich chunk. So I've got that coming out with the um, item pump. I think that's turned on, yep. And that is going into these two bins. And you can see right now I've got two ember crystals, three ember shards. And this thing's been on for a little while because <laughs> I left it running earlier. Um, you'll want to chunk load this, obviously, so that you can go fly away back to your base. Um, but yeah, that's going to get your ember crystals and ember shards. You're probably going to want maybe like 20 crystals, or no, 20, uh, let's see. 20 shards or maybe like three or four crystals before you even get started just so you have enough to keep stuff running um, but you're probably gonna go through quite a few of these so get a bore set up in a really good chunk and uh, you can see there I've got 64 coal in there slot 0 slot 1 that's where it holds the um, crystals and the shards so it's got three slots really cool um, you can actually put one of these on a chest And it'll actually show you what's in the chest. Now it's kind of hard because chest has so many slots and this thing just scrolls down. <laughs> so unless you're using a really small UI or you know it doesn't really work on a, on a chest unless you're in the top slots. Um, if you have a smaller chest that maybe it just has like four or five slots, this actually is a pretty cool looking thing. Um, does it? Let's see if it works on things like thermal expansion. You know, like uh, pulverizer has a couple slots, right? Slot zero, none. So it's only showing us the output slot on there, unfortunately, I think. Oh, can I put stuff in there? <sighs> yeah, so it's only showing us really this, probably this one output slot, or maybe it's even the, the battery slot. So it doesn't work with every mod, but it's a pretty cool little gauge system. All right, so that covers the ender bore. So let's go uh, talk about the crafting recipe really quick. A little more expensive, you need the mechanical core, iron, kaunite, copper, who are we kidding, that's not expensive at all. Piece of cake. And then, well, coal to, pro or coal to make it go. It works with anything that burns in a furnace. So you could put a lava bucket in there if you wanted to. All right, let's teleport back. Uh, back to home. And let's talk about what we do with these shards. Uh, put them in a bin. No, you can put them anywhere really, but then you need to pump them into this thing called the ember activator. The ember activator is copper, a furnace, and two iron plates. And this thing burns them on their own. It doesn't need any power source or anything. You just put the crystals into the bottom. Make sure you're pumping it into the bottom. And you can see right now I've got 64 ember crystals in there. And you'll notice that this top little piece, um, just ignore the, the emitter. It's just this little piece. And it's a multi-block, so, or I guess it's a multi-block. That's what it looks like on its own, right? Everything else is just added onto there. Um, well, that will start heating up and get ember inside, all right? And that can store 16 buckets, I guess. Well, it's a gas, so 16,000 units of ember in it in its internal interface, all right? Then, if you want to move it somewhere, obviously you don't want to keep it sitting in there, then you get that emitter that we already showed, and you can see that thing holds 200 on its own, just a little buffer, uh, and a lever and a receiver. You see here I've used a relay because this receiver was being blocked by this edge of the machine, so it couldn't transfer from there to there, so I had to put a relay in there just to kind of make it go uh, line of sight. Pretty cool. 
All right, now where the heck am I sending all this ember? This is going into our first machine that we're gonna cover, and that is the hearth coil. The hearth coil, if I can find it, there it is. Copper plates, copper block, iron ingots, and a mechanical core. Again, there's the, I don't know if I showed that before. Um, this is a glorified furnace. It does an ore double. It just furnaces. However, it does have a nice feature that the longer you keep it running, it kind of heats up and cooks things faster. So if I want something to cook, let's just get like some lamb chop or something, right? Uh, that's not lamb chop. How about mutton maybe? There we go. So here's some raw mutton. I'm just going to throw it on top and it cooked it. <laughs> and I took a, I have an um, item pump here. You can see that the bottom of this interface has um, a little place where you can connect a mechanical core. That's how I'm doing the input and the item output. Um, but I've used that uh, extender, the accessor, and then an item pump, item, item pipe into a bin. And you can see there's our mutton. And that was pretty much instant when it cooked it there. And that should work with anything that requires cooking. So we can take like a stack of cobble and just throw it on there. And it should all turn into stone. Yep, there it comes. Four, five. So this has been running for a while, so it's pretty much the top speed. It's about one cook a second. That's a lot faster than a furnace, right? And all you're using is these ember shards to power it. Um, so it's a nice little mechanic to cook it. Um, when, when you first start it up, it's like as slow as a normal furnace to cook stuff. Now, if you want an easy way to drop things onto this, because right now I can actually come and click it or just pick it up. There's no, like, it doesn't hold it in an inventory. Um, so make sure you're not dropping stuff on here that would like after five minutes disappear right that don't drop too much uh to, that, it, that it can handle um but here's a system this is using a vanilla hopper um coming out of this bin so if i put the cobble in here it's going to take it out and this um, going to go into hopper which puts it down into this item dropper and that drops it just straight down it's a really nice little block so if you had like some kind of timer so that you could turn the red hopper on or off or some kind of dropper, other blo other mods have droppers as well, but you want, probably want to only drop something down, you know, no faster than one a second so that it doesn't get a big backlog of this when you lose your items. So a little bit of uh, work that you got to do to to use this, but uh, it's a nice little furnace and it looks cool. <laughs> Okay, let's go back this way now, and this is our second machine, and this is called the, uh, I can't tell, Crystal Cell. Now the Crystal Cell is storage for ember that's a little bit better than these batteries. Remember the batteries hold, held 24,000 units of ember? These hold 64,000 units by default, and you can actually make it even bigger. So again, we've got to make one of these crystal cells. That's, uh, okay, we're starting a little harder now. Copper blocks, dawnstone blocks, so I haven't even shown you how to make uh, dawnstone yet. Ember crystals and dawnstone plates. So this is a little more end game. Uh, you're gonna use batteries at the beginning and that uh, are cells, and then you'll make this later on um, once you get dawnstone. So uh, I can do things like if I want to store ember in there. Uh, do I have a receiver on here? Yes, I do, and here's some uh, transmitters go ahead and send that out come on I might need to readjust it with my hammer here Oop, hammer please any day oh I might oh there we go it's on come on you've got tons is this full maybe no it's empty I've seen that sometimes that like, a little bug or something where things don't transfer and I'm not sure why I usually have to end up breaking them and put them back. I mean it's got how much do you have in you? You've got stuff in you. How much do you have in you? Oh you're full. Maybe this thing is full and that's why. Oh it is full. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's full, so that's not that's why it's not transferring. This stuff will not transfer when there's no place to receive it, so that's why it's stopped. All right, but how do we make this thing bigger? Because 64 buckets is nice, but let's go for like a million. I don't know. Uh, you can actually sacrifice ember shards or ember crystals to make your batteries bigger. So let's get an ember crystal and an ember shard. Just one. And I've got a bin here set up with a mechanical or with an item pump, item pipe into it. Uh, so right now it was 64,000 units. We'll put a uh, shard in there first, and that should pump it right in. And you can see, oops, 
turn it on would probably be helpful. Yep. Now it's gone up to 79. So we got 15,000 units just from one ender crystal. Or ender shard. Well, let's put an ender crystal in there. Bam. Now what are we up to? 16.9. I don't know what. Is that an additional 90k? I don't remember what it was before. Or 100k maybe? <laughs> it's a lot. So, I mean, if you, if you really find a ton of crystals... Um, oh, and what's cool is look how big this little, like thing is right now it's kind of tiny it's just a little doinky thing that's where it's actually being stored is in this crystal um, but watch the size of this thing as I put 64 in there <laughs> it gets big and it looks like we might have hit a maximum size of um, one point let's see one million four hundred forty thousand units that's sweet 1440 buckets basically of ember that you can store with a giant crystal it just looks cool too and you can see now that we've got um, space for it, both of these are transferring in. All right, that's the uh, the crystal. Let's keep moving. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, talk about a splitter. Did I cover? Yeah, I covered all the, the items for that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and extract out of here. And we're shooting it into this receptor. And this is hitting a beam splinter. Splitter. Sometimes you've got this giant at battery. You don't want to have a ton of receptors, all, or I mean emitters all over the place. You just want to split it to a bunch of different paths. Right, so that's when you use the beam splitter, and that is this. Nope, that's the centrifuge. Beam splitter. I don't see it. Maybe I moved it somewhere. There it is, right up. Oh, I saw it. Ah, I knew I'd ever item here. Pretty cheap to make. Beam splitter is going to split 50/50, or I guess you could go 30/30/30, or even more if you outused all the slots. You could split it. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> so right now we just have two outputs, so it's going to go 50, 50, and I can turn this one on and actually get 100% that way, or turn this one on and it'll split it. So you can see this one I'm sending off to this battery, this one I'm sending off to this cool little the design where I've gone over to this guy, over to there, over to there, over there. And this actually uses what I think is a Bezier curve algorithm to find out how to send these paths. So that was really cool. He's doing math in Minecraft to figure out the paths of this these um, uh, particles, basically. So, really cool, awesome little design. Um, so I'm splitting it, that's going into this battery. And now we get into our third item, which is the melter. This is taking uh, ore, and it's gonna melt it down. And at this point, it's going to ore double. So this is your ore doubling uh, mechanism, is to melt your stuff down, all right? It's gonna take ember to work. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn this guy on. We should get some ember out of here, maybe, into there, no? Hammer. Oh, I have to put it up there. U to U. Let's get some gauges. You have. Oh, you're probably full. Yeah, it's just full. Okay, cool. So um, this thing holds eight eight buckets of ember on its own. You need to pump it into the bottom. That's where the ember goes, and then your items go to the top. And you can do two things. You can either drop them in. So I've actually got that same dropper set up here. So let's just get a little bit of ore. Uh, just drop a piece of iron ore through there. Drop into there, and that will start melting into mm, liquid iron or whatever. Iron... What is that? Why can't I think of the name? Molten iron. Not ender. Ember. Yeah, molten iron. Um, you can see it's just taking a little bit. Uh, you can also pump the items in. So I've got a, a mechanical pump here to do it. Uh, you can um, also, once the item's in there, you can't remove them, um, but you can pump them out. So I just exploited that system right now because now I have a full um, ingot again, I thought. Where's my <coughs> engage? No, nope. In there. Okay, so maybe I didn't exploit the system. <laughs> I thought I was I was letting them process for a little bit and then pulling them out like before they were finished and it would like allow me to reuse the item, but maybe not. Maybe I just did something weird and don't didn't realize it. Um, but yeah, so if you if you ever get a ton of items in here and you're like, wait, I didn't really want to smelt it, the only way to get it out is to pump it out um, like that. Then we've got the liquid one over here, a mechanical pump. This is the item pump. Mechanical pump takes the liquid out of there, out of the top slot, and we're going to put it in a fluid tank. Now, you can see I've got a bunch of fluid tanks, and that allows me to process a bunch of different materials. However, 
uh, it just picks one at random. So it reaches this junction and half of it will go that way and half of it will come down. Um, and maybe that's not what you want. You want all of one, you know, iron liquid in here. I've got all my lead in there. If I turn this on right now, the iron would go maybe in there and maybe in here. So one thing you can do is use your hammer to turn different X outputs off. So that can just remove things. And now the only path it could go would be down that way. Um, but then I can turn them back on. Maybe I block this path so it can't go that way or whatever. So let's go ahead and extract our iron and that will go into this one, right? Is there an even iron in there? I don't know. I'm not sure where the iron went, honestly. It might have went in with the lead. Um, but it's going to go in a bucket, though. It probably went into here. Liquid gauge, please. There's nothing in there. Nothing there. Who knows? Iron is mysteriously lost. Um, but let's talk about what we do with the, the fluid, the molten metal. I've got molten lead in here, I believe. Yep, seven ingots worth of seven and a half, basically. I think it's a molten lead. Now, to get them into an ingot form, obviously molten is no use to me. I need ingots. You need two things. The um, stamp base, which is this block here, and the stamper. And I like to have it set up kind of facing down, but you can do it sideways. You can do it up. You can do it however you want. It just makes sense to me that there's liquid molten sitting in there. It, could sh it should be facing up so it's not pour pouring everywhere. So this is the way I do it. Now I have a, um, a bin at the bottom because when this stamper pushes against the stamp base, it's going to pop the ingot um, out straight uh, away from your stamper, basically. So by putting a bin here at the bottom, all the items should go in the bin until it fills up anyway. Um, or you could pipe them out into like a vanilla chest or whatever your storage system is. Uh, you could have a, a vacuum hopper here as well, too, because it would just throw it out in the world. Um, but yeah, so I can transfer this molten iron, molten lead out of here into this system. And you can see we've now got a full ingot worth stored there. And then we need ember to make the stamper work. So I've got some ember over here in this battery. Let's put that into there. Maybe. Oh, wrong way. Shift click on the receiver, right click on the emitter. And turn it on. There it goes. So that's going to go up there, and it doesn't take too much um, to stamp. Um, but you'll notice there's a little uh, ingot there. Oh, there it stamps. And it created us one lead ingot. It's probably going to do it again. There it goes. Now we've got two. Um, so remember, we got the liquid is twice as much as we put in there. So we ha we'd have two ingots worth if we put one ore in there. And so we'd get two ingots down here. It works pretty fast. Um, but then you'll look and you'll see that that uh, little pattern there looks like an ingot. Well, there's actually other patterns. You've got a plate stamp, and you've also got a flat stamp. The plate stamp, um, let's just look at how to make them. They're just uh, Kamenite in a certain pattern, and you just cook it, right? And the plate stamp can be used to make plates. And you can see that we only need one ingot to make a plate. And you should know from, like, IC2 or some other mods, plates are usually two ingots worth. So, um, we already ore doubled to get the liquid, and now plates... Um, are only take one ingot. So basically you're making an iron plate out of half an ore. So it's really cool. Normally if you wanted a plate you'd have to take your hammer. That's not a plate. Um, I think because they've all ore dictionary. Oh maybe that is a plate. You can take four ingots to make one plate normally. I don't know. It's basically, <laughs> you're, if you want to make plates you want to get this system running because it takes a lot less, uh, very few ingots to make your plate. All right, so that's the uh, the stamper, the melter, um, to make your double your ore. Now we've got over here, we've got two bin or two tanks. They're both empty, but if we put some gold, let's see if we can uh, disconnect this guy. There's nothing in here, right? Okay, we'll take some gold, and we'll take some uh, copper. I need it. Yep, there we go. And I'm just going to put maybe like four gold in there and four copper. All right. And it's going to melt the gold first. Actually, did it already melt the gold? Oh, that was fast. Or did I just take it out and put it in here? Ah, dang it. <laughs> Need to turn this off. All right, let's try that again. OK. 
Okay, so now it should be melting the gold first. And that's going to come out, and this is the only location it can go, right? Cool. Let's read our gauge till we get... We should get, what, eight buckets of gold? Something like that. Um, this is actually processing, pumping out. Let's stop pumping out. Thank you. So that's going to build up. And you can see it processes pretty quick. We've already probably got an ingot worth that just pops someone out of that. Um, and let me take the gold out of there because I don't need any more. And it's probably put the copper in the pipe as well. That's fine. Whatever. Do your worst. See, I'm back to 64 gold. And we know that we processed an ingot of gold. So I think there is a little way of exploiting it where you pull it out before it's used the full ingot or, or full ore worth. I don't know. It, it's probably more trouble than it's worth. But technically, you could get unlimited gold from just one gold ore. Author, if you're listening, I would uh, probably lock the item that's currently being processed and not being allowed to suck it out. All right, so we need to pump out gold or copper, and it's got nowhere to go because this already has something in it, and the other two are locked. So let's go and lock that one and unlock that one. Should get some copper in here. All right, now we're the aim right now is to make dawnstone. Um, it's used for all your armor and your weapons, your tools, and some other little blocks. And to make dawnstone, we're gonna need um, molten dawnstone, and that is made in a uh, in a centrifuge, which is this little symbol here. So you can see we need um, four millibuckets of copper, four millibuckets of gold, makes 16 millibuckets of dawnstone. So you're getting, f what? You're putting in eight and you're getting 16. So you're doubling again to get dawnstone. You're gonna end up with twice as many. Put, yeah. So you get uh, twice as many there and we need to put that in the centrifuge again. That was the item there. So that is right anywhere, maybe somewhere. Where did I put the centrifuge? There it is, mixture centrifuge. Plates, copper, mechanical ore, iron, whatever. And the centrifuge is a two block tall item as well. It takes ember to run. So let's go ahead and switch. Let's see, you to you. You're probably full and that's why you're not grabbing anything. Um, but so you need ember into the top, anywhere in the top. And then you need your two liquids into the bottom. And actually you can put four liquids in here. And I haven't found out yet if you can do that, you can just to make other alloys, like Tinker's alloys and stuff. Someone should try that. Um, but right now we're just making Dawnstone. So we're going to go ahead and put our gold in there and our copper in there. And that's going to be in the centrifuge. That's going to use up some, um, uh, what's it called? <laughs> some ember to process. And then we can pump it out. And we're going to put it in this little bin here. And you can see it's making molten Dawnstone. All right. Then you would take that molten Dawnstone, you would put it in your stamper and get molten ingots. So you can see it's gonna get pretty technical here where you've got tons of different bins putting it in, you're mixing some material, pushing them back into the stamper. You might have any multiple stampers because this thing keeps a little reservoir of, of stuff, even if it doesn't have enough to use. Um, so yeah, you might need a multiple stampers. Um, but yeah, you're gonna end up with Dawnstone. Now what are you gonna do with Dawnstone? Well, let's wait. <laughs> we're gonna cover that in just a little bit. I wanna cover the cinder plinth first because we're gonna need it. The cinder plinth is this, lead, silver, kamenite, furnace. It's basically a recycle bin, right? So you get tons of cobble, tons of any item that you want to get rid of, you're going to throw it in there. And you hold one stack of items and it's just going to burn it. And it doesn't, um, I think it does need em ember to, to, to work. And you're going to want to put a bin right underneath it. And that's going to catch all of your dust. If you don't, or your ash, sorry. If you don't, then the ash is just gonna go flying all over the place. So put a bin underneath, you get the ash piles. Now remember, we use that ash to make these cool decoration blocks, but there's also other items we make with it, and we're gonna need those in just a minute. So that's the cinder pl plinth. You can make it pretty early on, so you can get your dust, you your your decoration blocks. Um, but you're also gonna use it over here. Now there's a couple different um, items now. We're moving away from machines into items. Um, there's four different pickaxes available here. The copper, let me clean my inventory up a little bit. Copper pickaxe, silver pickaxe, lead pickaxe, and dawnstone pickaxe. And I've got an iron and a diamond one here just to compare. You can see the iron one is 1.24 and uh, diamond is 1.25. The uh, silver is, is 1.24, so that's equivalent to iron. Copper is a little weaker. But copper is easier to get, right? And lead is again equivalent to iron. The dawnstone is 1.245, so it's better than iron, but weaker than than 
diamond, all right? So if you're having a long, hard time catching diamonds, you can do that. And you can see these are available in, in all the standard tools, a pickaxe, an axe, a shovel, a hoe, and a sword. Um, and the same thing holds out where the silver and lead are equal to iron, copper's a little weaker, and dawnstone is in between the two, all right? So that's your tools. Um, then you've also got really special tools here. We're, we're gonna get them in a second, I think. What are, where are we going here first? I think we're gonna come back here and talk about these guys. I've just got them displayed in research tables. So these guys are called Aspectus, and there's an iron version, copper, lead, silver, and dawnstone available. You wanna make one of each, maybe two of each, and you can see the recipes are a stamping recipe where you need molten iron in the reservoir beneath it, a plate stamp, but you also need an ember shard. So to get that um, iron one, basically to make the iron, you need iron, don some donstone. Right now we've got lead, right? We don't have quite enough, um, but if I wanted to make the lead aspectus, I would need, oops, <laughs> an ember shard and a plate stamp. So let's get a plate stamp here and an ember shard. Um, so you might not want to burn up all your ember shards. They're not worth very much. The crystals are worth a lot more. We can take the ingot off and put the plate on there. And then I want to click with the ember shard into there. You can see it sits in the reservoir. And now if I had enough lead, this thing would pump down and turn this into a, uh, a lead aspectus. So that's how you craft them. You use the stamper and uh, you'll get the lead aspectus. All right, so again, make one of each of them as soon as you can because they're going to be really useful in a moment. All right, let's talk about the super cool items. Back, clean the inventory. They have a few things. There's one that's a gun, the blazing ray. You've got a hammer. <laughs> you've got a clockwork axe. You've got the clockwork pickaxe. And you've got the cinder staff. And you see how I kind of take it a little bit steampunk method? These look very steampunk. One thing cool about these is just what they look like. like I'm in the armor, and we'll show that in a minute, but this uh, this thing is gigantic. It's a huge weapon, and it gets better. I mean, the gun is pretty cool, <laughs> but look at the grand hammer. It's as big as me. Axe, yeah, all right, but look, look at the pickaxe. It's huge. So, yeah, these tools are really cool. Now, let me get back to regular here. Um, these are crafted... They all have a similar crafting recipe. They're gonna need a shard somewhere in the recipe. Dawnstone plates and Dawnstone ingots. So you're gonna use a lot of Dawnstone to make these, but they are pretty much well worth it. Grand hammer, you can see it takes blocks of Dawnstone to make. Axe is a little bit cheaper, some copper, and the pickaxe is really cheap. So that's awesome. Um, what do they do? <laughs> well, they run on, on uh, on ember. Um, they have no durability and to really see what they do let's put them on the this guy and get our eyeball. You can see okay we got the blazing ray and it says ember powered dawn stone shotgun. When ember is available in the containers in the inventory it can be fired to shoot blazing beams of ember. Pretty cool. Alright so let's pick that one up. Let's put this one in there. Grand hammer is a massive hammer with an ember powered core. Um, it does damage using ember, so you can use it as a, a weapon. Um, it's a powerful weapon and is also capable of forming a wide sweeping attack when right clicked to knock back enemies and deal damage to them, and we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, as far as the clockwork axe, it's basically a giant axe that can cut down trees. Um, it's a really good axe to begin with, but if you right click, you cut down a big chunk of wood. It's not a true tree feller, you know, that kind of thing, because it doesn't go from the bottom to the top. It does like an area, like 11 by 11, I think, or maybe 5 by 5. I don't know. It's it's not, um, you know, going to fell down a huge redwood tree. Um, but it will take out a ton of wood really quick, so don't right click near your base if your base is made of wood. <laughs> Clockwork pickaxe. Um... Also, I'll, it's, you know, normal axe, it probably functions about diamond level. Um, but it can break dirt type, stone type, um, really effectively. So it's really good against dirt and stone. Also, you can right click and it will break a 3x3 three three area in front of you. Which includes um, obsidian. So if you want to mine obsidian, this is a great tool to do it because it's instant. You're just going to need ember. Now, how do we get, before we see these in action, how do we get the ember into them to be able to work? Well, there's two things. You've got your... 
mantle jar and your mantle cartridge. The mantle jar holds a little bit. It's only 1,000 units of ember. The mantle cartridge is 6,000. Uh, now what makes them different is the jar will power your tools if it's anywhere in your inventory. Just needs to be in an inventory slot. Doesn't have to be in your hotbar, just somewhere in your inventory. The cartridge, on the other hand, has to go in your shield slot or your offhand slot. So you can see I've got the cartridge, you kind of, you know, it's going to go in that slot. So that allows me to hold much more, but I'm limited that I can't use a shield or an offhand. All right? Why would you want to? I don't know. <laughs> so now that we've got our cartridge and our mantle, they're going to give us, we've got, you know, between the two, 6,000, 7,000 units. Let's go actually play with these. So I'm going to get, oh, we did do the staff. Hold on. Let's do the staff. Where's the, the cinder staff. Um, it can be charged up to create a large fireball. The more it's charged, the larger, more damage the fireball ball will become. So let's try that first. We've got a cow over there. Hello, Mr. Cow. So remember, it's set. Um, left click doesn't really do much. I'm in creative mode, obviously. <laughs> um, right click to charge up a fireball. That's going to get bigger and bigger and use more and more ember. But you can see if, here's the max size. This thing's huge. Now we're going to fire it at that cow. Bam! One shot the cow. <laughs> This does a ton of damage. Um, doesn't like cook or it, it cooked him. It actually cooked him. Wow, I didn't expect it to. I was just going to say, no, it doesn't cook. But it did. It cooked the cow. That is awesome. Okay, so there's your staff. Here's your ray. Um, I can right click and it's just going to do a quick attack. It's going to light them on fire. So again, it would cook them. But not a lot of damage. However, um, if I hold it down, it's going to be more accurate and also fire a little more um, material and obviously that was not right there you go so I killed him in one shot there probably cooked them maybe again all right cool so that's your uh, blazing ray so if you want a decent ranged weapon you know take it to the nether or something uh, you've got this guy and his his range is pretty crazy I don't know what the max range is maybe that cow is just out of range haha <laughs> you lucky cow let's move into the hammer and I need to get out of creative for this hammer you can see it can break stuff it can do damage um, I don't know <laughs> if there's any mobs out there all right it's not doing much there um, this is mostly used for for damaging and I, I was just left clicking um, I need to find a mob let's get a skeleton out here you under the tree there you go so here's a skeleton I can hit him took him down half health basically um, but watch if I right click <laughs> that didn't really show it off. Let's do a bunch of skeletons here. Do I have enough health? I probably do. Alright, so here's a bunch of skeletons hanging out in the trees. Watch this when I right click. It does like a sweeping attack. And you see it's charging up right now. If you look in the hot bar, it's actually charging because it's got to fill back up with ember. Um, so I can come back here and you can see it like does a decent attack. It only takes two shots to kill skeletons. Um, but it could kill like 50 skeletons if they're all stacked on top of each other. Let's see if we get these guys. Yeah, see, there we go. Pretty cool. Oh, we even got that guy. So it has a decent range as well. They can attack. Awesome. All right, and then uh, next we have the Clockwork Axe. Let's go and chop down this tree. You can see it's a pretty nice axe to begin with. Huh, I just barely got the achievement. However, if I want to do a whole group of, dirt, of, of logs, I can right click. There it goes. Let's try and find a tall tree so I can prove my point that it doesn't go all the way up to the top. Alright, here's an acacia here. If I right click on the bottom one, yeah, it didn't go, go that high. And now I have to wait for it to charge again. So, it's not good at harvesting tall trees, but these short little oaks it's great at. You can harvest them all in just one click. Alright, the next thing, Copper Pickaxe. Remember, it does dirt and uh, stone really quick. Let's see if we can get into a cave over here, actually. So here's stone. It's speeding on stone. Maybe the same as diamond. Uh, but then you remember the right-click ability is a 3x3. Three three. Oh, 3x3x3. Three by three by three. <laughs> that was a little bit unexpected. I thought it was a 3x3x1. Three by three by but it's actually a big cube that it destroys. Nice. And just to prove the thing, let's get some obsidian. And just put a bunch of that down there. And we can harvest that instantly. Pretty sweet. So there's your, your tools. They all are have a cool little ability. 
and they're all made with a Dawnstone. So you need to you need to get a bunch of that before you start making your tools. Um, now we talked about these, uh, and we can see we use 5360, none of that. So we didn't use very much for how much we just went and clicked on stuff. So it lasts quite a while. Now how do we make these metal cartridges? Ember, crystal, iron, glass, plate. Metal jar is a little bit easier. Now how do we put ember in them? You're going to need this thing, which is a copper charger. All right, now let's get some ember for you. Where can I grab it from? Uh, I need a hammer. Fix the inventory. You've got one right here, so let's take, uh, give me receptor there. Shift right click, right click, there we go. And now it's gonna fill up. Now this battery can store 24,000 units, and it's actually, oh, it's probably just filling this little interior buffer up. But 24,000 units, so that's gonna be able to full four of these on its own. And you just take the mantle cartridge, I don't know where it went, there it is. And right click on the little battery, and there it goes, it's charging it up, using it up, and now it's full. So it's pretty quick, it, it charges it pretty quick, um, so you just need one of these hanging out and to charge your tools again. Alrighty, put that back in there. Now, the big thing, how do you look as cool as I do with this cool armor? That, you've got to do alchemy for. Alright, so remember all these little things I told you you need to make? Well. Here's why. <laughs> if we look at this armor, it takes ashen fabric. All right, some more than others. It's all Dawnstone. Wow, you can put a jetpack on this? That's cool. <laughs> I didn't know I did, but I guess you could put a jetpack on it um, if you have IC2. Um, leggings takes ashen fabric. So everything here really takes ashen fabric to craft. And if we look at that fabric, we can see this weird recipe where it takes two ash pile. We know how to make that two string and a wool. All right, well, let's get that then. I'm in creative, so it's a lot easier. Ash pile, there. one, two, string and a wool, right? All right, so that's the recipe for one of those um, pieces of fabric. And then it also says it takes 12 to 24 of the, the iron one and 12 to 24 of the silver one. Now, what does that mean? Well, you need the aspect of iron and silver to make this, this stuff. And uh, how we get that is we take these ash piles, and we need a ton of them, so don't waste them all on your decoration blocks. We need to put them in certain pillars. Let's talk about recipes, I guess. You've got this here, which is your exchange tablet, and that is Dawnstone, a lot of Dawnstone, Kamenite. And then you've got a bunch of pillars, which are alchemy pedestals, sorry, more Dawnstone, and a crystal. All right, so pretty expensive, not really. Need at least one um, pedestal for every little um, aspectus, but you see I've got two of the um, Dawnstone ones, and that's because there's some recipes that require more than you can put in one. <laughs> It'll make sense in a minute. Um, and there's three items that you can make with this system, this alchemy system. The leather, which we already showed. The glimmering, let's, where's my eye? Oh, that doesn't even work. Huh, interesting. Ash and fabric works. The glimmering doesn't. The inflictor gem works. Okay, well that's interesting. Um, but yeah, those are the three things that we're going to make from this. Uh, maybe is this mod is pretty new, so maybe he'll add more stuff um, that can be made from this. But they're all crafted pretty much the same way. Let's get those uh, that recipe egg here again. So we need to put the two ash piles on the side with the string and the wool in the middle. So that's pretty easy. Let's do that. So ash pile. Oops. If you click on the top, it goes in the middle. So let's do the wool. Ash pile, click on the side. Um, ash pile, click on the side. No, I don't want that. So there's a little problem, is it tries to put a full stack in there, and you don't want that. You only want one, and I don't want two in here either. You can see it did that. So be careful how much you put in there, or the recipe's wrong, and it won't make it. So there's two of those. Split my string, click there, and click there. All right, so our recipe is set and configured, and now we need to click, um, do follow the other part of the recipe, which is 12 to 24, that gives us a range, so we're not quite sure, ash into the iron aspectus pedestal and 12 to 24 in the silver. So let's start at the low end and just do 12. So let's separate these out. 
and 12. All right, so I've got 12 and 12. So we're going to go through this a lot. Once you learn the recipes, they don't change, so it's easy. But I'm pretending I don't know them. Uh, we needed the iron one, so let's put 12 just in that pedestal. I can't, I can't really see that there's 12 in there, so you kind of just have to know. And then it needed, um, shoot, 12 <coughs> the silver, which is here. All right. Now, is it going to do anything? No, you need one more cool tool, and this is the cannon, the beam cannon. It takes a ember, as always. It has a lever to activate, and you can see it's got 2,000. I think it needs 1,000 to shoot a, a, a beam. And you can actually shoot this at mobs and kill them. It does a ton of damage. And the way to aim it is you take your hammer anywhere in the world, shift right click, then you come back to it, and right click on it. And you can see now it's aimed a straight line to wherever we clicked. Now, if we had a mob farm right there, we could kill a ton of mobs. So use this as a mob farm, maybe. Use it as self-defense. I don't know. But it's also needed for this exchange table. So shift-click on the table, right-click on that, and now it's aimed there. I just need to turn it on. And it'll fire. And you can see it's going to start pulling. It looks like it's pulling from all of them, but it's not really. And it looks like I made two of them too far away. <laughs> Silly me trying to make it look good. I made them too far away. And you can see we failed. Oh, we failed. We didn't put enough for the right values of, of ash in there. So we got this chemical waste. Can we use it for anything? With a flash stamp, we can turn it back into ash piles. The flat stamp. All right, so we failed. That's fine. We lost all of our items. So we're going to have to do it again. Two string. Actually, we should probably just get a ton. <laughs> so if we lose again, we're fine. Uh, wool. And we've got the ash. So let's uh, split this up. Okay, so one wool there. Ash, ash, string, string. Doesn't matter which way those are rotated. I'm going to fix these really quick. Need to be with a certain within a certain number of blocks, apparently. There we go. But any, other than being in, in range, they can be organized however you want. You can make it look pretty if you, if you have better uh, skills than I do. All right, so we did 12 and 12. That didn't work. So um, you can see that it says accuracy 0%. That means we are way off. <laughs> that almost makes it sound like a recipe was wrong. Um, but that tells you how close you were. Um, we could try 16 to 16. What was our, re our range again? 12 to 24. So let's let's bump it up to 16. Again in the iron and the silver. I hope I'm doing that right. And it should shoot again because we've got a beam in there, right? Oh, we've got no ember in there. Hammer. Um, let's see. I'm going to borrow Oops. you to you. You can see this thing can shoot quite a long ways. It's shooting it all the way over here from there. No loss, as far as I know. It's going to build up. Once it gets past 1,000, it should shoot again. There it goes. And again, it's going to try and pull from everything. It's just pulling the ash in from each pedestal. So it's going to pull 16 of there, 16 of there, mix it with the stuff. Hopefully we get it right. Maybe. Come on. <laughs> there we go. All right, we got a chemical waste again. Accuracy is 0%. All right, it makes it s me think we're doing something completely wrong in the recipe. Let's check this one more time. Two ash, one wool, two string, 12 to 24 iron and silver. You're iron, right? Yeah. You're silver, right? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? I just shot randomly. Probably don't want to leave it on. I forgot about that because if you get shot by it, you die. It's instant death. <laughs> so turn it off when you're not using it. I don't know, guys. Um, I guess you just have to trust me. I'm doing something wrong. Somebody comment down below what I'm doing wrong. Maybe it's just not enough ash. Maybe I'm not using. I'm supposed to use ash? Huh. I don't remember. Um, we could probably eye the, this thing. Yeah, sufficient ash. The necessary elements for recipes present nearby pedestals. The process will begin. Ash, ma ash matches the recipe exactly. A product will appear. Otherwise, waste produced. Visible accuracy. You know how far off we were. So we did everything right. Maybe we were just way off on the number of ash. Maybe it's 24, 24. Um, but with it being 0%, that just seems wrong. 
Anyway, so let's say that we got, um, not a research table. Let's say we got some of this leather and we made our, our stuff. Now, it doesn't really have a lot of effects. I mean, here, let me get into regular survival. You can see the iron, the, the things, a little bit less than diamond, a little bit more than iron. It looks sweet, <laughs> but there is one cool thing you can do with it. And that involves these guys right here. They are the Inflictor Gems, all right? And before I get into the Inflictor Gems, let's just cover what the Glimmering Shard is for. That makes the Glimmer Lamp. You take the Glimmer Crystal. You really only never need to make one of these, uh, but the Lamp is really cool. If you have an inventory, you can actually right-click. I can't fly because I'm not in creative. And it will shoot out a little bit of ember, and wherever it lands, most of the time, not in water, uh, it's a little it's a little buggy sometimes there it goes wherever it lands it should make a little um, glowing ember thing and this will last forever and it's a light source so if you don't like the look of torches you can use this thing just to light up caves pretty cool so let's get back here um, and I need some fire let's go in the, in the sand area uh, da -da. All right, I've got a flint and steel here. I've got my ashen cloak on, and I've got inflictor gems ready. All right, so let's actually clear everything off here that we don't need. All right, I can put fire down the gallon, and let's say I walk through it and takes fire damage. I'm in creative, that would. There we go. Let's walk through fire in survival, and we can lit on fire. Now, we took damage there. And I right clicked while I'm taking that damage and it takes it away from me and puts it on the inflictor gem so let's get on fire again I don't know why the fire effects not working but click again Oh, I was not on fire so just get in the fire and click these things or I guess you don't even have to click you just have to be hovering over them so oh, am I gonna die stop dying get in the water create a mode whoo <laughs> that was quick close heal me please thank you all right, so basically you're gonna you're gonna have these in your inventory. You're going to walk into whatever you can take damage from, and while well, you're highlighted over that. And I believe let's try drowning really quick. Am I in survival again? With this one highlighted. Let's wait around till our air bubbles pop out. There's different damage effects that you can absorb, and I'm not gonna spoil everything. Um, but if you have one of these highlighted while you take damage, it usually works. All right, there we go. So we've got that one, Inflictor Gym, filled up. And that one is Attuned Damage Drowning. So we've now got Fire and Drowning. Now what the heck do we do with that? We can actually use those on our Ashen Cloak. All right, so we've got these gems, some Fire, some Drowning one. And if we look at this here while it's on a pedestal, this is our Cloak. It said we can put the gems into our Cloak. We have to craft them with String and at least one gem. So let's go over here to their crafting bench. Put our Ashen Cloak here, one String and we need to put some gems in there. So if I put one gem in there, it's now got one drowning gem. All right, but let's go ahead and put a few fire in there and the drowning gem. And you can put obviously up to seven in there. Don't have any others? No. All right, so take that out. And now if you look at it on my back, maybe, do I, I have two now? What? What's going on? <laughs> um, it's got these little white things sticking to it. And that's just to signify um, that it's used them. So I think I could put two more in. Um, but let's get back out to the fire now. Now my, um, excuse me, the I'm protected from a little bit from fire and an even tinier amount from drowning. So let's put this on fire again. Get back into normal and just walk in it. And you can see I didn't take any damage there. Okay guys, I had like 20 minutes later, I'm back. I uh, had a bad crash and had to go into MBT Edit to fix all my data um, without losing the world, but I'm back. Hopefully everything's working. Um, I know that Feed the Beast uh, Beyond is not using the latest version of Embers, um, so there are some new items, some new machines, and maybe that crash bug is fixed. Apparently when you stand in fire with that cloak on, you have a chance to crash um, over and over again and, and kind of 
it's a bad one because you it crashes before the game loads, so you can't get out of the fire to fix it without code, you know, changing the MPT stuff. All right, I think we've covered just about everything. The last item we really didn't do is the Ember Lantern. Crafted like this, iron plate, ember shard, iron ingot. You get four of them for that. And they're just a torch, basically a fancy looking torch. I want to do one last thing before we go, though, and that's uh, turn this world to night. Um, and just see what it looks like with all the glowy stuff. So yeah, those lanterns, pretty good light source. They lit this place up pretty well. And uh, yeah, that glowing thing in the middle of the night just looks sweet. Put that up on the top of some kind of tower. Oh, it's like the eye from Sauron. I have Soren. Um, yeah, and then have this cannon shoot at it to kill mobs. Oh, that'd be an awesome mob farm. Guys, that's Embers. You should now be an expert at the mod. It only took us an hour and 20 minutes to, to get to that point. Um, but that's all that it has to offer, at least in this version. I'm sure more will be added as it comes. But I really love the mod author's take of no GUIs anywhere. You notice we didn't ever clicked on a, on anything to open something up and type in it and, and configure it. It was all just with a hammer or, uh, you know, building multi-block structures. It is really cool. Check it out, Embers. If you haven't, I encourage you to try it early game. Just as you know, get away from your standard thermal expansions and everything. Just to, to see if you can, you know, do ore doubling setup and, and see how uh, worthwhile it is. Maybe it's not the most worthwhile because it's a little bit challenging to shut up, to set up. But it looks so beautiful. Yeah, give it a try. Guys, if you like this episode, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to see more. Next up, I'm not sure what, make sure you go to my Twitter account where I've asked for what pack do you guys want to see next, or what mod in the pack do you want to see next. I'm not really going A to Z anymore. We were, there was a bunch of like kind of boring mods at the beginning of the pack, a bunch of juicy mods at the end of this alphabet. Um, so I put a request out on Twitter. What pack do you, what mod in the pack do you want me to cover next? Um, so reply back to that Twitter post and, and I'll maybe cover that mod next. I'll see you guys next time. You are now Feed the Beast Beyond Experts. Catch you later. Bye.